Today on Excellent Leadership with Sam Adeyemi. You may be out of control. God will never be out of control over your situation. And remember, the potent force that can change your emotions is revelation. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 10. All of us are going to read together. It's a short verse. It starts right in the middle of a sentence. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 10. Let's go. Nor complain, as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. You will not be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All right, let's title our discussion, Don't Complain, Give God Praise. Don't Complain, Give God Praise. To be a high flyer in this world, you must learn to have a grip on your emotions. You must have a grip on your emotions. Our emotions are powerhouses, like power generators. And whatever we channel them into is powered in our lives and produces effects. If we channel our emotions into the negative aspects of our lives, we produce negative results. We channel our emotions positively, we produce positive results. Hmm. When you combine negative emotions with negative confession, that's an explosive cocktail. You combine positive emotions with positive words, we create an atmosphere for miracles. I'll say that again. Negative emotions combined with negative confession produces negative results. It's a dangerous cocktail. Has the capacity to produce disastrous results. So, God gave us the capacity to think. And with our thoughts, we are able to channel our emotions. Negative emotions are root Dead in negative thoughts. Positive emotions are rooted in positive thoughts. When we don't control our thoughts, we are also unable to control our emotions. You have a plethora of negative emotions that the Bible warns us against, from envy to hatred, to anger, to anxiety, to doubt, and so on and so forth. One interesting thing we need to observe is that our emotions have the capacity to color our perception. In other words, it doesn't matter how beautiful something is or someone is, when our emotions are negative, they color how we perceive the person or the situation. When our emotions are positive, same thing. <laughs> they color how we perceive. It's amazing. So this is very, very important because ultimately our response to people or our response to life is colored by our perception. When we complain, it is simply because we perceive a situation to be negative and especially we perceive it to be a situation that we can do nothing about. Complaining shows people 
that you believe that you have absolutely no control over a situation or circumstance. The most potent force that should shape your perception and my perception of a person or a situation is revelation. Because with revelation, we see it the way God sees it. Hmm. What you see determines how you react or how you respond. What you see determines how you behave. When we see people or circumstances the way God sees them, we will respond the way God responds. So we complain about a lot of situations or circumstances that God is excited about <laughs> because things are working in our favor. Complaining is a sign that we believe the wrong thing. Complaining is a sign that you believe the wrong thing about a person or about a situation. That's very, very important. Complaining is a sign that what you believe about your finances is wrong. Complaining is a sign that what you believe about your husband or about your wife or about your child is wrong. This is very important. Let's read Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16 in the New Living Translation of the Bible. Complaining is a sign that you now believe the wrong thing. Philippians chapter 2, from verse 14. It says, Do everything without complaining and arguing, so that no one can criticize you. Live clean Innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life, then, on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. Do everything without complaining and arguing. So, as a Christian, you are banned from complaining. Why? The situation may be out of your control. It is not out of God's control. Two, you have not asked God yet what he thinks about the situation and how he sees it because he sees the end from the beginning. A Christian is banned from complaining because there's absolutely nothing beyond the control of your God. Jesus got to the house of Jairus and said, why all this noise? Why all this noise? The girl is not dead. She's only sleeping. And I'm here to say to someone today, that situation that looks to you like it is dead, it is finished. In fact, there is absolutely nothing anybody can do about it. It's a temporary situation. Okay? Do nothing. Don't complain and don't argue. This is very, very important. Complaining brought destruction to Israel. I mean, that's the scary part of it. You couldn't get, have it better than Israel had it. You couldn't have it better than Israel had it. Miracles. Everything about Israel was miracles. <laughs> Their food was supplied through miracles. They walked through the Red Sea by a miracle. Their health was miraculous. Because eventually, Moses testified. Israel walked for 40 years, and he said their bodies were so empowered by the Holy Spirit that even their shoes did not wear out. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? But they didn't see it that way. Not all the time. Numbers chapter 11. I'll read just verse 1. You can read the remaining verses later. 
Numbers 11 verse 1. Now, when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. For the Lord had it and his hunger was aroused. So the, finger, so the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. Wow. The more you complain, the more you attract problems to yourself. Somebody said the more you complain, the less you obtain. The more you complain, complain the less you obtain if there was any group of people that was meant to be grateful to God it was Israel I'm telling you nobody should have praised God celebrated God more than Israel and no group of people should have had faith that God will work on their behalf because God had never failed them every challenge was turned into a testimony yet they were complaining help me to tell your neighbor God has been good to you. He holds you nothing. Tell the person there is no reason for you to complain. You have every reason to give thanks. Listen, <clears throat> I've shared this story before. <laughs> Attitude is not a gift, it's a choice. And sincerely speaking, we may think that we have the right to be negative simply because our circumstances are negative, people around us are negative, but you will never have a good enough scriptural reason to be negative in your attitude. It is not what happens to us that hurts us. Eleanor Roosevelt said, it is how we respond to what is happening that is the real problem. Yep. Our response is the real big issue. Jesus said, if someone slaps you on the right cheek, turn the left one. What was he saying? What the person did is not the issue. How you respond is the issue. And you can choose how to respond. You can choose how to respond to your situations and to your circumstances. I was on campus and was walking by this elderly lady when I was a student. When I overheard her having a conversation with herself. What she said baffled me. I had never heard a human being say anything close to that before. She was speaking in our local Nigerian language. <laughs> Let me say it. <laughs> For those that understand the language, you, you, will, you will get the import of the statement, then I'll translate it. Kini Mufi Shalom. What have I done to God that he's killing my chicken? She said, day before yesterday, one died. Yesterday, another one died. Now this morning, I've woken up and another one is dead. What have I done to God that he's killing my chicken? Wow. I had never had anyone level an accusation against God like that until that day. And that's why I've not forgotten, <laughs> even though it's many, many years since then. I mean, that's <laughs> some 30 years now. I have never forgotten that God is the one that has been killing your chicken. Help me to ask your neighbor, <laughs> what has God been doing to you? If it's negative, it's not God, it's the devil. Put the blame where it really belongs. But the point here is when we focus only on the negative, we just never get to appreciate what God is doing in our lives. Israel complained and complained. Israel got to the border of Canaan. Some of their leaders went to spy out the land. Most of them came back and they were complaining about what they saw. And the whole group of people, everybody began to lament. God brought us here to this place to destroy us. That the, at the end of the day, you know what happened? They were destroyed. And th that's the warning that we got from 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 10. If you back up to the beginning of the chapter, the Bible is writing about Israel and warning us about the things that they did wrong. Remember, they never entered the land of promise. That generation that left Egypt. And the Bible is warning us about the things they got wrong. 
And one of the things they got wrong was complaining. Complaining, lamenting, being negative. And eventually, <laughs> they did not make it. You will make it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, if you find yourself in a situation that is going negative, going down south, things are not working quite well as you expect. In fact, you may catch yourself going negative already. Okay? Catch yourself feeling bad, feeling sad, feeling sorrowful. What should you do? One of the greatest questions that I have asked while studying the Bible is how to switch my emotions from negative to positive. Everybody needs to know how to be able to do that. As long as you are on the channel of negativity, things are not going to happen. God is not going to move. The power of the Holy Spirit is not going to flow. You've got to switch. And one of the best examples I got is in 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel 30. David went with his men to carry out raids. They came back and their own city was finished, leveled to the ground, burnt down. Every single building burnt. All their wives and their children were carried away as captives by the raiders. And the Bible says that David and his men felt so bad, felt so bad that they cried. The Bible says that they wept until they had no more power to weep. That was really bad. And to have your wife, your kids gone. And not only that, everything you ever built in your life finished. And they wept. Then the Bible says that the men began to speak of stoning David. Why is it important for us to discuss this? <laughs> because as long as you are on that frequency of negativity, the breakthrough ideas you will get will be to kill someone. There will be bad ideas. There will be ideas fueled by hatred, fueled by strife, fueled by anger. Then the Bible says there, 1 Samuel 30 verse 6, And David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. That switch in emotions was what saved the day. Because as soon as he did that, the idea that would take them out of the situation came to him. As long as they were crying, they did not even remember God. The moment he switched to positive, and I'm telling you, that is what makes a leader a leader. One of the most important things on this planet. If you are going to rise into leadership and succeed as a leader, if you're going to have influence on people, is your attitude. You've got to be the one person on the team, the one person in the group that can see that tiny ray of light in the midst of the gloomy darkness. You've got to be that one person that knows that beyond the dark clouds, the sun is still shining. And you can tell everybody this cloud will pass. Israel came right there to the border of um, the Red Sea, right, right to the Red Sea. Pharaoh and his army were coming behind them. They looked at the Red Sea. There was no way they could cross. And everybody went negative. Oh, Moses and Aaron brought us here to destroy us. That's it. They just wanted to kill us. Hello. Uh, that things are not working perfectly doesn't mean that you should not be able to think anymore. But Moses was the person that spoke up and said, everybody, stand still. <laughs> okay? Stand still. Stand firm. You just watch and see the salvation of the Lord. As at that point, even he had not had anything from God. But he had enough faith in God to know it was a temporary situation. It will pass even when he did not know how. That's faith. It was after that that he went to pray. <laughs> Lord, what are we going to do? And he got the marching orders. Don't even bother to pray, just march forward. Amazing. That's leadership. Back to the 10 spies, we call them, or the 10 leaders in Numbers 13. 10 out of 12 gave a negative report and the whole crowd, 
believe them. That's to show you how influential leadership is. Attitude is contagious. When you begin to complain, please realize it's not going to be only you. If you're a parent in a house, you're complaining, no, you're going to infect everybody else with your negative attitude. If you are the head of a team in the office, you're negative, you will infect everybody else. When you switch, like David switched, it's the person that is positive that the solution comes to. David found the solution. God told him, you will pursue them and overtake them. And without fail, you will recover everything that they took from you. David and his men recovered all their wives, their children, their goods, and even more on that day. I prophesy by the power of the Spirit of God. If everything's been going down south for you, I prophesy. Today is the turning point in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Prayer is the key. Prayer. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing. Once you find yourself lapsing into worry, lapsing you know, into anxiety, once you find yourself on the complaint channel, stop. If you don't know anything else to do, begin to pray. If you don't know what to say, pray in tongues. <laughs> pray in tongues. Like we saw from God's word the last time in Acts of the Apostles, whenever they spoke in tongues, the Bible says that they magnified God. Pray. That's it. Bring God on the situation. You may be out of control. God will never be out of control over your situation. And remember, the potent force that can change your emotions is revelation. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, there's a beautiful story there. It didn't start beautifully. A woman went, you know, to the high place to go worship God. They called it Shiloh. They called that place Shiloh. Every year they would go. And this particular year, this woman was very sorrowful of heart. Her name was Hannah. Why? She had never had a child in all the years that she had been married. She was sorrowful of heart that year. She prayed like she had never prayed before. That prayer changed everything. I'm encouraging if you want to get off the complaint channel, Prayer is a very, very critical factor for you. First Samuel chapter 1, and I want us to read verses 12 to 18. And I'll close on that. First Samuel chapter 1 from verse 12. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, you do your research later and read what happened to this woman and why she got into that state. Let me give you some idea. If you back up, you know, to verse 6, it says, And her rival provoked 
her severely because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. <laughs> that was what led her to this point. Instead of talking to human beings, talking to her husband, complaining to people, she faced God. Prayed until the servant of God came, made a pronouncement. And I love this woman. She believed. She went home, changed everything, took food and ate. <laughs> and stop being sorry. I prophesy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The days of being provoked by situations and circumstances, provoked by people, the days of being harassed by Satan, those days are over forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you came into this service praying, if you came into this service longing for an intervention by God in your situation, if what you're facing is beyond human ability, I prophesy today the God that we serve, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, steps into your situation today in the name of Jesus Christ. The days of sorrow are over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In all things give thanks, for that is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Help me to tell someone sitting next to you, don't complain. Give God some praise. Someone put your hands together. Let's give Jesus a shout. Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Whatever was impossible before you came today has become possible. Someone conceives a baby now. In the name of Jesus, the heavens are opened over someone now. That financial situation is resolved now. That debt is paid in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 